What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? Welcome back to the show. If it's your first time joining the show, welcome to the show. Like it, subscribe it, do whatever you got to do. Leave a comment down below for the algorithm. I got a great one for you today. Not a good one, a great one. I got one half of the Scissor Bros. It's Jeremiah Watkins is in the house today. I'm so excited to have this dude here. Go check him out live. I'm on tour as well, andrewsantino.com, andrewsantino.com. Right now, I'm in Las Vegas. Lost wages, baby. Tomorrow night, I'm playing the Wynn Casino. And then I'm going to be playing Dallas and Austin, Vancouver, Lake Tahoe. We're adding Montclair. Then I'm doing uh, Niagara Falls. I'm jumping all over the place. Go to andrewsantino.com for those tickets. andrewsantino.com. Come see your boy. Enough rambling. Let's go to the episode. In here, we pour whisk, 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 whisk. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are oh, hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Gin. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again today. It's Mr. Jeremiah Watkins. Mm. One half of the Scissor Bros, like I said before, um, you are the, how do we say this? You're the troublesome one. You're the colorful one. You're the tall one. You're the pale one. Mm. You're the You're the one with the social uh, problems. You're the one who gets in the most trouble. Yeah. I'm the bad boy. You're the bad boy of the yeah. two. Yeah. And Steve is what? He's the girl next door. He's the cute little girl next door? <laughs> yeah. And what does she do? Oh, she does a lot of bad stuff. Mm -hmm. she, yeah, she kicks her feet up behind her head while she's on the phone with you. Like her legs over her head? You talking about putting her legs behind her head? She's a contortionist. Whoa, she's a perv. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah and I have known each other for quite a long time. I've done his show. Uh, I've also done the Scissor Bros. Go check that out. Uh, if you haven't seen me on that show, I just did it where I stole his baby and we told the world that Jeremiah and Steve pay me all their residuals for the rest of, I guess, the next 20 years that you guys do a podcast together. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty serious. So Yeah, and I uh, want my money soon, by the way, because we're already on the, it's like the end of the month. Does tonight's appearance count as like... Sure doesn't. Oh, okay. Yeah, pay up, pal. By, by the way, um, I brought my baby, you delivered the baby back to me. Uh, yeah, after your baby's in the car right now? Yeah. Is that safe? I, I don't know, is that is that not... Something well, if you have a Tesla, I know they do that thing with the, with the dogs that says, don't worry, my owner's <laughs> I've coming back. I've got a back. Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that made me so sad. We'll get you a, let's get you a Tesla. Okay. Guys, click right here to donate to Jeremiah's Let's Get Jeremiah Tesla Fund. Uh, we started it not too long ago, and we already have raised about $185,000. Yeah, it's going to be So hoping good. that we can get around to a half a million to get you that Tesla, bud. I brought my baby by the garage the other day. Oh, no. <laughs> really? So, for those that don't know, uh, we shot, uh, I shot Scissor Bros with the boys, and we shoot it in Jeremiah's garage, and mm -hmm. the baby was traumatized because Jeremiah woke him up right as he was about to take a nap, Yeah, put him in my hands, and he had no idea what was going on, and he bawled, he was crying the as whole time. As soon as we put him in Andrew's arms, just immediately, just like immediately, and he's not a big crier like that. But it's funny, because I, I usually, I'm great with kids, I'm great with babies, but also, I didn't know how to hold your kid, so I did put one thumb in his butt. I don't know if that's, it, maybe that's what made him cry. Oh, no, 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 that's how I do it. Oh, right, right. No, you, he's used to that. And then you carry him around like, because in case he, one hand slips, you can always hold yeah. him with this hand. Globetrotter style. I just Ooh, spin him. you spin him. Yeah. Yeah. Doo, 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 I'm getting him, doo, doo, he's doo, doo, getting him young doo. early. He's a spinner yeah. early, yeah, yeah. Were you a hooper? Mm-hmm. Because we played in the, com you played in the comics league. Yeah, yeah, Were you a hooper when ago. you were a kid? Yeah. You were? Yeah. And then you gave it up. <laughs> I mean, I think we all No, have. I think you gave it up. I think you could have been something, bud, and you gave it up. You think so? Well, I don't know anymore. You could have made it to at least the WNBA. Thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. Comp I think it's competitive. I think I could have been a ladybug version of, you know. So good. Rodney Dangerfield. What a it's movie. A, it's a solid What movie. a great reference. Yeah. People that don't know. What a movie, The Ladybugs. If you, uh, maybe you prefer the She's All That Amanda Bynes version. No, thanks. That's a pass from me. Okay. I'll take Ladybugs. Any okay. Who was the female star of Ladybugs? Uh, it was a kid that, I don't remember the, yeah. Who, who I don't remember the, the boy. Do you remember the boy? No, no. The boy that dressed up like a girl, right? That was the whole thing. Yeah, I don't Let think he went on right to do a ton of other movies. You did say he? that it's and then it's Zach like, Braff. Yeah, it's like oh wow, Barbie I did, Jr. I said Zach Braff because I just saw his name on a big poster. He's in. He's redoing. Um, look at him. It looks like I'm on the phone, but I'm not. I'm looking this up. Ladybugs. What? Yeah, Ladybugs. Roddy Dangerfield. 
Uh, it's not Anthony Michael Hall or something Jonathan like that. Jonathan Brandis. Jonathan Brandis was the boy. He was very famous. You don't remember this kid? No. Sure what else you was do. he in? You remember him, dude. He passed away. Did he really? Yeah, 2003, he died. From? He died at 27 years old. I know you think I'm making a joke here, but I'm dead serious. <laughs> really no, can't. no. <laughs> Sometimes I can't tell your tone. No. I really can't tell your tone. Jonathan so Brandis. Yeah, he died. Siri, I, I, all I, facts on Jonathan Brandis. Whoa, Download it's a, now. It just said yucky for some reason. Jonathan Brandis, yucky. I don't know why I did that. Maybe his death was... Um, let's guess how he died. I'm going to go with drug overdose. Yours? Uh, hooker. Actor. Oh, you think a hooker killed him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, interesting. Mm -hmm. Good guess. He was found... Oh, no. Do you want to hear this? Mm -hmm. November 11, 2003... Brandis was found hanged in the hallway of a Los Angeles apartment. He hung himself. Ooh. Died the following day of injury sustained from the hanging. He was 27. He did not leave a suicide note. That is, this is, way to go, dude. Way to bring up something so traumatic. I'm sorry I brought up ladybugs, guys. Why the fuck did you do that? I didn't mean to, I didn't think it would something start yourself in a sour knew, note. Something tells me that you knew <laughs> you would come back, you did. <laughs> yeah, I did. Pretty wild. Get ready. You know, the last time that I did your show, I was in Las Vegas. Yes. Which I'm in right now. I'm in Vegas right now. Oh this no! Weekend, I'm oh, in Las and Vegas. the shows have been going amazing. Well, there's only one show. It's tomorrow night. But yeah, no, but it feels like two shows because you pack so much little punch. And where am into I playing it. again? The Wind, Las Vegas. Oh, that part you did get right. Oh yeah. Where did we do the interview when we did Vegas? We did it at the Tropicana in my hotel room because I was playing Jimmy Kimmel's club. You guys were at the Laugh Factory. No, that was a different time. One of the times I met you there in Vegas, we did. We were in Vegas a couple times at the same time. One time Kill you Tony. were headlining. Uh, the, the Tropicana and Sandra was featuring that's and at the Laugh I, Factory and yeah. you, at the Laugh Factory and I had a last minute host set that 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 uh, they asked me to come do and then that's a different right. time I met up with you because I was featuring over at the factory and you were headlining over at Brad Garrett's I or was or Jimmy Kimmel no 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 Jimmy Kimmel I Jimmy never, Kimmel. I never headlined Kimmel. that's Brad's. right Jimmy Kimmel and Brad's a good buddy and I love Brad but he came to see you at the Laugh Factory that's right. shows that's where I got the Brad Garrett I love him He's yeah. he is the man and I never played his his room. I don't know if it's still around, but I... I hear it's good. Is it? Yeah, it's still... I mean, it was good. I just never got around because every date that they had given me, I was like, I'm already booked on something else. And Brad would call. like He would like call and text me last minute. He'd be like, I did you next week. And I was like... I, next week? How? I was <laughs> yeah. like, there's no way. He's like, gotta do it. And I'm like, it's impossible. I literally can't. I'm doing something. Else. I'm sure I'm... I'm sure at the time, I'm sure I was booked in some whatever room where I was... Doing like six or eight show. Did you ever do an eight show weekend? Dude, I did uh, one of those weekends where I did, I did sixteen shows. <laughs> That's not real. I did eight days in Vegas once. I, they asked club? me to stay what over club? at the Laugh Factory. I you did, did an eight day run. Sixteen shows. And for like for like one hundred and forty seven dollars, you got it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you better cash those checks. Oh yeah. Wait, seriously, that's insane. Yeah, they no, just asked I, you to stay because they somebody dropped Vegas out. Vegas is the one of, run? Yes, they're like, can yeah. you come in uh, a day early huh? because somebody needs to leave soon, and then we need you to do the full week. Uh, and I was like, yeah, sure, but like you agree to it because you need money at the moment. But of course, eight days doing shows in Vegas is no, nearly impossible. No thanks. Especially your boy, ate the cafeteria food. Every day. You ate in the basement. Oh, yeah. Me and Bobby have talked about this on Where Bad Friends. Where the asbestos and everything it's was. so sad. Uh -huh. That's where Legionnaires came from. You have to eat in the basement. So The employees eat in the basement, but it's so rude because it's like, this is not a healthy place. It's just, it feels so sad. There's also no windows or clocks. I got accused every day of being a thief. Of stealing I, from- That was back when I had long hair, and they're like, how did you get down here? I'm like, I'm an employee. God, it's so sad when you flash that card. I know. I'm like, I'm an employee. I stopped eating down there because the first day we did it, and Sandra and I, and I was like, let's go somewhere else because I just, it was, it made me so sad. Oh no, no, I, I could see how people get really it depressed there out. very quickly. I'm gonna have a little bit of this rabbit hole just to switch up because I don't want to talk about how sad Vegas sure. basements are. So so far, Jeremiah's killing it with the ladybug references, the suicidal tendencies in basements in yeah. Vegas. Should we start this? <laughs> Yeah. Rabbit hole. I'm having some of this. You don't have any because you don't drink, and that's fine. You don't have to. Um, that's not requirement of this show. But I'd love, uh, I'd love to break your no drinking. Is it? It's because you just you can't. Uh, I never have. Um, you pour that in slow. You pour that in like a little. Oh yeah. Oh, you feel that? You've never had a drink in your entire life. You've never had an inclination to have a drink. Never had a drug. You've had uh, a cigarette. No. Uh. -uh. You kissed a guy. No, but that's You've the closest one. You've never kissed a guy? Not in the mouth, no. You've had anal? Raw dog. 
Oh, okay. You got me, man. You're a bad boy. <laughs> oh, I told you I'm the bad boy. So the never this never the, this sauce never wanted to touch your lips. I think I don't know if that's 100 percent true of the the want or the the curiosity yeah. at some points, but I know that my personality not a good mix. You think you'd be an addict? I think so. Do you Anything come from that, addict tendencies? Yes, and I do have addict tendencies. Your but pan- I just who's I just, an addict in your family? Uh, w- can you say all? All of them, really? I think all of them have different addictive tendencies, and some of them, like, have had, for sure, have had issues with alcohol and stuff like that. Like, I come from, my dad was an addict. Not, yeah. it was drugs, not alcohol. But I think, uh-oh, slow down with that water, bub. But I think I think it's something that, yeah, you have to choose. Uh, I just chose it. You chose, I right, well, your addiction be... is comedy and entertainment. Yes. Yeah, and you obviously you're you're addicted. Yeah, and you and you're. It's hurt and it's hurting you and those around you. So you should stop. <laughs> I'm, this is an intervention to get you to quit comedy. <laughs> <laughs> we want you to stop. It's gotten out of control. <sighs> okay. Yeah. Too many posts. Too many. Uh, it's too many everything. Too many everything. It's, it's too, too much. Many, it's too much, Jeremiah. I mean, you know, I I, I see the comments. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. It's yeah. bad. Wait yeah. till they get onto this video. Ooh. I think when I saw your first talent, by the way. When I really saw your talent and your ability, I'm being genuine. Okay, is when I during Kill Tony's, because I, you know, I knew you as a comedian and I, I've known you for years, but when I really saw you do what you did on Kill Tony's, on on the Kill Tony show or on the episodes of Kill Tony, I, it was it was really impressive. It really was to watch what you guys did. Yeah, we. I mean, yeah, a lot of good times. I mean, it was just times. cool to it was just cool to watch you guys create fun characters and. To stretch the limits and also to, uh, you guys kind of didn't back down at all. You really tried crazy shit, and it didn't matter if it wasn't really working right away, because sometimes it wouldn't. No, and you guys would just plow through it, and so, it would work. Sometimes, uh, and this is something that we had to figure out ourselves. Sometimes we would let Tony completely set us up, mm-hmm. which was a mistake because, like, if it's our characters, we need to just like an improv scene. You got to establish what you want out of it, right? Sure. So sometimes if we let him do it just out of like him just observation, he'd label us something that we're like, no, it's actually this. And if we didn't set it up, then it might be the wrong chain of events for a whole episode. So we had to figure that out down the road. Like, yo, we got to come out, say exactly what we are, mm-hmm. tell the crowd what we are so they can start getting on board because if not, then like it's, it's a shaky ground, you know? Did you ever get worried? Because you seem like a very protective guy. You're somebody that Usually, make sure you're not going to offend. Do you know Ooh, what I mean by that? I don't know. You don't seem. You don't seem. Um, I don't think I. Yeah, I don't. You don't think seem I, like a. I don't give a shit guy. You seem like a. I like to have fun, but I definitely don't want someone to be like, "Hey, man, that's not okay." I don't. With me specifically, I don't ever try to purposely offend anybody. If that's that my makes point. Sense. Yeah, 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 you don't yeah, go yeah. out of your way. I don't go out of my way. And if, if it, it happens, happened, I, and it's funny though, I'm like, ah, it's funny. You don't care. Yeah, that's how I am. See, from face value, I always think you're thoughtful about your approach. You're never, I never feel like you're shooting from the hip. And this is not a negative thing, but I always feel like you're not someone that's going to get caught up in your own words. There's not going to be a Jeremiah Watkins N-word video. No. And here it is. God, how great we press play. Just 20 minutes of you saying the N-word. <laughs> Cancel him now. Right now. No, but I just think you're. some people are much more delicate in their approach. I feel like some people are flying the plane without instructions. And I feel like you're, you went to class and you studied and you're, I think you understand what you're doing in comedy and you want to make sure that you're not, um, doing something out of turn, so to speak. Do you know what I mean by this? Yes and no. I I think, um, I think with Kill Tony, I think that, I think you're dead on with that specifically with Kill Tony with my standup. I'd probably disagree with you. Yeah. Yeah, with Kill Tony, because I was the kind of lighter, sillier side. Yeah. So I wanted, that I went out of my way yeah. to kind of make it lighter and stuff like that. But with my stand-up, I'm a very shoot-from-the-hip person where sometimes I say stuff where I'm just like, ugh. Maybe it's also then your look, too. Your face doesn't have like a mean, you don't have like a, if you said something foul, I knew you were, I'd know you're kidding. That, yeah, that does help. Because your face what, looks yeah. like a Midwest Norman Rockwell kid. Oh, all right. Like, like, a, like um, shoot a basketball poorly. Hold a basketball poorly. 
Yeah. Look at that. That looks like a, yeah, yeah, yeah there it is. He's lost. Three, two, shoot it. Uh, yeah, brick. <laughs> Underhand. Yeah, see? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just think your demeanor, your personality, your style, all this stuff makes up who we are as comics. And audience members kind of don't know that sometimes. But like your stance, your rhythm, all that stuff about you. If you said something crazy and fucked up, uh, I just, I know that there's no vitriol behind it. It's kind of a good quality to have. People- You got a sweet fucking face, bud. Oh, well, thank you. The kid's got a sweet face. People like when I have uh, uh, breakdowns on stage, though. What do you mean? People like it when you freak out? Oh, yeah. Because I have a little bit, I think, I think, yeah, I think that we share this. I think we've got a, a little bit of the, the well, inner a, rage I'm at times. I'm a psychopath. I'm for sure. A right, psychopath. right, right. Yeah. I think we've got a little, we share a little bit of that where it's like, it's kind of, it's like below the surface, but sometimes like on stage, if I'm frustrated with like the response I'm getting, or if it's a frustration with myself, I start to fly off the handle and the audience likes it because I seem like I'm well put together, but then like, I'm just, I lose it. You explode. Yeah, yeah. Have you had a moment where it's gone really, really bad and you felt bad about it? Uh, like you said some shit to somebody? No, I mean- You're like, look at this stupid fat bitch, and it just blah, and it all came out? No, I only, this was years ago, I made somebody cry at a show on accident. Really? Yeah, on accident. What'd you do? It was a thing where, like, somebody yelled something out at a show where it was like, it was like 10 people in there, and it was like when I was back doing shows- they were mixed with improv teams and stand up at the mm. same time, and like in the, these little black box theaters and stuff like that. African American box, go ahead. Yeah, um, but there's this girl who's like, "That's a Will Ferrell bit." I'm like, "What are you talking about?" I'm like, "What is the bit that you're referring to?" She goes, "I don't know. It just sounds like Will Ferrell." And I was like, "I just lost it." I was like, "You just accused me of stealing a joke, and Will Ferrell doesn't even do stand up. What are you talking about?" I just went off on her. Yeah, and then she was one of the improvisers on on the. Uh, what a fucking idiot! Though. I know. She's a fucking idiot. Do you I, know her name? No. Find out her name. Let's uh, kill her. Okay. Let's find out where this idiot lives. <laughs> yeah, right? Sounds like a Will Ferrell bit. I don't like that. Well, there was a guy at the improv. It was a week ago. I was just chumming it up in the front row. And I tell this joke about Superman being bisexual. Have you seen me do that? Mm -mm. You know, they made the next iteration of Superman is bisexual. And I'm not going to do the joke, but I talk about it. And he starts like really getting vocal. He's like, oh, gross. Fucking gross. And at first I'm thinking he's kind of joking. Right. But then I turn and I'm like, you you, you have a huge problem with the next super iteration of Superman being bisexual. It's his son. You can look it up. And he was like, yeah, I don't want my kids looking at that shit. And if everyone, now this isn't what I wanted to have happen, but everyone started booing. You know, like now they, they all collectively start booing that well, guy. Well, yeah, it started. It started with a few, boo, 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 you know, and then it turns yeah. into. Do you know what I mean? It turns into that weird like, boo, yeah, that's right. what it's and it's like not even audible at some point, right? And he's like giving the finger, and he's wasted, and his girlfriend couldn't be more embarrassed. And it was like, when I was a kid, I remember exploding on people. I remember being at the improv, and it being like fourteen people, and just lighting up somebody because they were just being a fucking asshole. Yeah. And I didn't even get satisfaction. Even when you would light them up and everyone would laugh, you were still at the end, you felt dirty. It's almost like coming where you're, when you, it's awesome. And any moment you come, you're like, it was sad a little bit. Like it felt great. Yeah. I was sad. Right at, I was like, immediately the moment after I was sad. And I, I zapped back to that moment and, and I did, I wasn't mean to him at all. I was like, are you, is this fun for you, dude? Right. You look, this is sad, If you dude. can handle it more in a clever way, you always feel better than being like, you're a piece of shit. Yeah, and then you win a in a weirder way. You know, like, Neil Brennan came back and was like, dude, the way you handled that was wild. He was like, it was great. Because I also had come up with a couple of jokes, like, off the cuff like that. Like, he had said something like, yeah, he's like, bat you know, Superman being bisexual is blah, 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 whatever. And I was like, wait till you find out Batman is trans. And then I just went on these other rants about what superheroes he'd be yeah, the most yeah. mad about that if they found out that they were X, Y, Z. And it just kind of worked in the moment. It worked. And Neil was like, oh, man, that was genuinely the best version of it. But I was so kind of bummed when I got off stage about the ending of the set because he fucked it up. Yeah. That I was mad. And he was like, no, dude, it was good. I was like, no, that pissed me off. I I'm mad I let him get in a little bit. And he was like, you didn't. So it's like, I think with age, we've learned over the years to just, it, you're never going to win by like making them cry, like, no. shitting on them. You don't win. You just you don't win. You Even don't feel when you good at the end of the night. No. Yeah, you lose. But it's funny. But if you can do it clever and not be like "fuck you, asshole," if you can do a clever way of 
wrapping them into the jokes, then then I think you take a big W. Yeah. It's yeah. harder to do. I had a guy who it was so weird. He kept he came in 20 or 30 minutes into my headlining set over the weekend. Sweetheart. With his girl. His girl was there. Yeah. And he comes in and sits down and I go cuz sometimes you're like, okay, somebody went to the bathroom in the middle of a bit and sure. they came back and I go, "Did you just get here?" Yeah. He goes, "Yeah." I go, "Oh, well, let's fight then." And then this dude looked at me like Stood up. he was ready. Yeah. He's like, "All to right, fight. dude." I was like, "Dude, clearly I'm joking. What are you?" He's like, "This is why I show up late. I'm looking for a fucking fight, bud." Dude, strap up. It was so. And then this girl goes on to say, "He he left." I, I go, "So I need to impress you." He he goes he goes. I I'm thinking about getting an Uber. I go, "You just got here." <laughs> <laughs> like so, you're judging me immediately, seeing if I need to make you laugh in two to three minutes. Like your fares are going up outside as we're talking. I like this guy. And and he's like, "Yeah, man." Yeah, I go okay. Well, here I'll give you a couple of jokes. This dude was laughing at the jokes, and then he ended up leaving. And then I start talking to his girl, and and she goes, "Yeah, he's so insecure. He keeps claiming that I'm cheating on him and stuff. And so he keeps like checking on me when I'm out and stuff like oh, that in sure. public. Oh, he wasn't supposed to come. Yeah. Oh, this so is so weird. Was she alone? Yeah. Well, that is sus. It was so bizarre. But it's sus for her to be like, I'm going to this comedy show. No, she totally just wanted to get myself. away from that guy. Yeah, that's what it is. She's, <laughs> that's she's running away she's from this running away from, And then I go, do you live with this guy? She goes, yeah, he lives with me. Like, my name's on the lease. I go, why are you with this guy? I yeah. don't understand, like, how, like, women will stay with these guys sometimes. I'm like, I don't get it. I mean, and guys stay with these women. This is yeah. a two-way street. People stay with people because they're scared to not be with anybody. Yeah. How old are you now? 33. You're in love. You have a baby. You're married. You're happy. If it was ripped away from you, you'd be fucking lost. Yeah. So it's kind of like people get, when they get settled into something that they enjoy, even if the person goes nuts or goes crazy or becomes a, a psycho, it's like. It's still easier than maybe doing a oh, hard yeah. reset. Yeah, yeah. Like I just watched the um, the Bad Vegan or whatever. Did you see this documentary? Uh -huh. Oh my God. This is about this woman and she's like, in her, in her narrative, is held captive by this psycho dude who's not physically abusive, but like emotionally and mentally, just like a trap, you know, like a trickster and is stealing money from her. And, but you're also like, there's so, at so many points you're like, lady, get out of there. What are you doing? But also there's, there's manipulation that makes people feel like they're supposed to stay. It's super fucked up to watch from an outside. Have you ever been in many relationships like that where you, where you felt like trapped, where you needed to stay? No. I mean, my college girlfriend, I felt scared to leave her because she, she like, Threw a knife one time at me. Did you catch it? And with my teeth. Hang, hang. And then I, uh, I cut something up. No, she, <laughs> she was gonna move to Los Angeles with and me, she but slit I knew. Your it wasn't your, good. And then you pulled yeah. a roof over. You're like, I wish you were my dad. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had a dad I like I you. Dad like you. She was gonna move to LA with me, but I knew that was a bad idea. I was like, you gotta let me go to LA alone. It wasn't right. I didn't want to move her away from what she knew. Mm. And then in the end, it was the right decision. But. I was, yeah, I was afraid. To, I was afraid to go to LA alone. I thought it would be way easier with a partner because I knew nobody out here. And then also, yeah, I was, I did still love her. So, but I just knew it could, this couldn't go on. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not, we're not going to do a long distance. So I was like, you got to do your thing and I've got to do my thing and fail at comedy for the first couple of years. Cause you do like those nights that you're drowning, you know, when you first move here, you got to do it on your own. Like, when did you move here from Kansas? 2009. And you know that the first couple of years here are probably the hardest years you've ever had. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, you don't come from money. No. So, like, mom and dad weren't f siphoning money to keep you afloat? No. Did you have a shitty day job? Yeah, I worked at Starbucks the first two and a half years. Did you? Yeah, yeah. Can you make Beverly me, a, Hill you make me a, uh, a mocha frap right now? <sighs> come on, dude. Let me see the hands. Let's see if you can do it. Three. Two. I was one. so bad Go. at it. Oh, oh man, this already looks like a fucking nightmare. What so, is he grabbing? I what was are you so grabbing? bad at this job. What is that? Man. Is that my milk? What is that? Okay. All right, so okay, that's a scoop. He's got one scoop of what? <sighs> Another scoop. All right, one more scoop. <laughs> what is that? Is that caramel? Uh, no, it's the, it's the chocolate. Oh, that's the chocolate? That's the chocolate. Did I want chocolate? It's the mocha. Let me talk to your manager. <laughs> okay. Hey, uh, there's this fiery redhead that's up front that's really wanting to talk to you, and he wants a coupon. Can I just give him a coupon? I'll just give everybody coupons. You would. Dude, I was the guy. They're like, hey, I, here's the thing about my, I'm like, here's a coupon. They're like, really? I go, yeah. It was just a free drink. I, free drink. Every, that's amazing. I'd be like, 
free drink? And they're like, it would extinguish their anger immediately. They're like, oh, thank you. I go, yeah, sorry about the wait. <laughs> That's immediately. amazing. And then like at the end of like a week, my manager would be like, Jeremiah, we're missing a hundred free coupons. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what they're having to do? I'm like, hmm. mm, I don't know. I think Caleb, look at Caleb. Yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. probably took them. Yeah. I love the idea of you giving someone a coupon and they're like, you know, I was going to kill someone today and this really... You would I be stopped. surprised what a free drink will do for somebody's Shocks. day. Shocks their whole Especially day. Especially if they're like, hey man, how much longer I go, free coupon for a drink? And they're like, okay, th thank you. Like immediately. That's all they want. They just want to be acknowledged that, like, yeah. that you're wrong or whatever. In here, we pour whiskey. whiskey. This episode of Whiskey Ginger is brought to you by Rabbit Hole Distillery and their one-of-a-kind Kentucky bourbon and rye whiskeys. This stuff is really good jazz. Look, I've been drinking this for the past month since they sent it to me. And uh, what makes them special, in my opinion, is that a lot of times uh, places say that they're getting small batch. That's a You hear that a lot, small batch. That could mean thousand barrels. Uh, who knows? Uh, but Rabbit Hole, that small batch means under 15 barrels, so you know the quality is going to be there in every single bottle that they put out. Um, I really like this. I'm starting to see a lot of people say toasted as well. Toasted barrels, specialty releases. All this stuff is uh, rhetoric to help you buy uh, and to catch your attention. Uh, but every single one of Rabbit Hole's uh, expressions is aged and charred and toasted barrels at a low entry and never chill filtered as it should be. This stuff is really good. Go to rabbitholedistillery.com slash drizzly. Use that promo code rabbit for $5 off your first order. They got the Cave Hill, the High Gold, the Boxer Grail, and the Derringer. The Derringer is finished in those sherry finished bourbon casts. It's delicious. Look, this stuff is really good. Go pick up some at your local liquor store. Or, like I said, go to rabbitholedistillery.com slash drizzly and use our promo code rabbit for $5 off your first order. Drink up. Enjoy responsibly. Listen up, Whisk Gingers. I know, uh, I know what happened this winter. We all got a little pudgy-wudgy. Including the old Red Rocket, okay? I got a few thumper pounds on me from eating and drinking late night, but I'm here to tell you, Peloton, baby. Peloton is going to fix this for you. You can get one of these in the comfort of your own home, and you can ride your fat away. Ride all your cares away, all right? doesn't matter if you're pudgy-wudgy like me or you just want to continue to stay in shape. Peloton is incredible. Uh, you know, I'm sure you're familiar uh, they're pushing you further with that Peloton bike and the Peloton bike plus. Uh, but they got new classes, new music, new ways to keep your workouts fun and motivating. Plus, they got uh, boxing. Peloton is stepping into the ring with its newest discipline, no gloves needed. Discover a fast, furious, and fun workout with Peloton instructors in your corner. Pretty cool. Even if you never boxed before, it don't matter. All right, work with sweat while working on the fundamentals of form, footwork, fun combos are going to keep you on your toes. They got the new artist series music selections. They're adding fun new artist classes. Uh, work out to the music of a single artist for an entire class from your favorite hits to the deep cuts digging in the crates pop and rock to hip-hop EDM there are over a hundred artist series to choose from find your favorite music and turn turn your next workout into a concert yeah buddy uh, they got more daily workout variety and it's easier to stick to your goals when you keep your workouts interesting Peloton has a workout for every single day and every schedule de-stress from a long day with 30 minutes of strength 20 minutes of cardio do quick 15 minute total body class before work. Stay motivated while having fun with bike workouts, yoga, meditation, dance, cardio, and much, much more. You know Peloton, you've heard of it. Now's the time. Visit onepeloton.com to learn more. That's O N E P E L O T O N.com to learn more. Ginger. I like gingers. That's what customer service is. You never know you're going to win. You never think you're going to win. Well, if airlines... You just want to be like wrecking. You don't want them to go, this sucks. You're right. You know when people tweet at airlines and stuff? Mm. All it would take for them to be like, hey, we'll give you an upgrade the next time. Uh, a free... You know what I mean? They do. Do they? Yeah, the airlines. They'll go, we'll DM you. And then they DM you like, we'll give you 10,000 points or miles or whatever. And then even though it's insignificant, it doesn't mean anything. And miles are a scam. Don't get into miles, by the way. Do them. Use them. But they're a scam. I had a cousin who got into miles. It's kind of pretty slippery. What ended up happening? Uh, heard of Paul Walker. I actually left it open for Jonathan Brandis. I thought you were going to say it was Jonathan. Mm -mm. Another tragedy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's just like I, people just want acknowledgement. I ju they just want to feel like they're not alone, or that they're just being heard. Yeah, listen. To, please listen to me. Right. 
That's yeah, all it takes. It's true. Just give me a little bit of, a little judge. You know, I just, I stayed at this hotel. I complained because it was extremely expensive. It was a little getaway for us and, and it was not worth the money. And they, the, the manager, I didn't make a stink while we were there, but when we left, he was like, how was everything? And I was like, I got to tell you, I was bummed about a few things, like really bummed. And he was like, seriously? And he like, listen to me. And then I thought, this isn't going to change anything. I already paid. Who gives a fuck? It's over. But he did hear it. And whether or not it, it, it like sunk in or it was just like in one year out the other, fuck me next, you know? Yeah. It still was nice for him to be like, I'm sorry, man. That, this is, that's not okay. I'll try to address those things. It made me go, all right, man. All right. All right. Yeah, and I, I didn't burn it to the ground. I was going to light the whole room on fire. That makes sense. I, yeah. I, I stayed at a place with my wife uh, a couple weekends ago. It was kind of like a weekend getaway thing mm -hmm. for like a night. And uh, we opened the blinds and dirty panties fell out of the blinds. And we're like... I knew I left the 1306. Mm -hmm. I knew. I, dude, I was searching for hours. Where are my dirty panties? Yeah. Wait, they fell out of the blinds? Dude. What I, color? They were like these like purplish burgundy. I pretend and, like you didn't look. And they were soiled. <laughs> <laughs> were they? There were women. That, th this girl nutted in them. Really? Yeah. You picked him up. You you investigated? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, <laughs> wifey, uh, we got a problem here. Um, no, I took a picture and I go, I hate to be this guy, but uh, there's dirty panties on the floor of the room that we just checked into, and they were like, "Oh my, I'm so like, I'm so sorry." What do you imagine happened? I think that a guy like and a girl got hot and heavy. Mm -hmm. They went up against the window. Mm -hmm. He quickly took her freaking panties off. Okay. <laughs> threw them in the blinds. Okay. Freaking oh, uh, yeah, just went for it, uh huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then he just stuffed them back in the blinds, right? Stuff them in the blind. What a weird thing to stuff them in the blinds. <laughs> right. That's where I'm lost. <laughs> yeah. They get thrown on the floor. They get thrown on a lampshade, like in a movie. Who's taking them off and is like right in the blinds? Yeah, just get in there. Ooh, stuff them in the blinds. Oh, grandma, forget about Maybe it. Maybe that's a thing. They like to hide their underwear. Maybe that's their That's thing. their kink. That's their, their fetish. Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. I always uh, leave a used condom inside the Bible, the, you know, the Gideon's Bible in, next to the bed. Oh, yeah. I always do that. I use a condom. In the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's, your, what's your dirty hotel secret? Everybody has one. What do you do in the hotel that you shouldn't do? It's not... Go ahead. I just I I jerk off too much. You jerk off the whole time in the hotel, a lot. Well, okay. You use the towels, or where do you do it? <sighs> I use a Kleenex. You do? <laughs> you use a Kleenex? <laughs> yeah. So weird. You don't use a towel. They're right there. I'm too sh I am too shamed. I see the towel later in the weekend. I'm like, yeah, I came in that thing. I'd, ra I'd so rather I'd rather stuff it up. You mm, I'd rather come in Kleenex, flush it, and then forget about my my guilt. Your little dirty, yeah, your little dirty secret. Because okay. Do you ever, do you ever pull too many Kleenexes and you see that there's an old uh, color that's underneath the Kleenexes? Well, that means it's about to run out. Right. Yeah. I do that every week. It's every week. That's your. So you get rid of all the Kleenex. I. You I, go through a I, box I, of Kleenex every time. Every time you're on the road. I go through all the white Kleenex in the box, and then there's just the pink and brown Kleenexes left. That that's you. That's how old they are. That's like, you. Because the, the, what they do is they stack new ones on top of this old layer, layer from the 80s. But I always get down to the layer from the 80s. Holy shit, Jeremiah. What about, yeah. why not toilet paper? No. Why Kleenex? Because toilet paper, like, sticks, like, to you as soon as you, like, in it. But you're going to get in the shower anyway. Mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> you go, you, you come and go, like the gas station. Yeah. Oh, you go to bed. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's you, like how I wind down. Do you jerk off before a show? Like before never, you, really, never, ever, ever, ever. Why you're afraid to go? I, you get too tired. On I'm like Muhammad Ali. You know what I mean? Yeah, you got to wait till the fight's over. That's interesting. I never come. I literally, like wife, I won't. I if, won't have sex with my wife before shows. Really? No. Nope. Wow. I don't like it. Well, she doesn't like it either, but she's doing it. So you know, tip of the cap to the old wife. Yeah. She gets it. She, she gets it. I mean, she unfortunately, over the years. Yeah, I she mean, gets it over the years. Yeah, and then she gets it later you know what i'm saying from who from another guy <laughs> yeah man i'm a cook you like to watch yeah big black guys <laughs> big black guys you're yeah, a yeah. watcher yeah yeah i'm a watcher i'm a, like a bird watcher i'm a bird watcher i'm a bird, bird watcher. watcher watching birds fuck my wife watching them one all of my life. could you imagine that is such a concept that i can't wrap my head around if you have an open relationship and you want your significant other to have fun fine but to watch it I blows my mind. I never understand that. Why do you want to see it? 
Well, obviously, you have a thing where you like men more than you think you do. I think it's masochistic. I think you, they, people like you the pain. You think it's the power? No, I think they like the pain. I like. I think they like Ooh. the... You know, like when somebody cuts themselves or when someone like... I think when you sit in a depressive state and it almost feels good because it's so sad. You know when you listen to sad music when you're in a bad place? Mm -hmm. And it like kind of like ruminates this fucking self-torture. I think people that are cucks, it's a chemical thing where the this like... This dark, deep, sad, hurtful thing, they... They kind of just love it. Like, it's sick and they do you have love a, it. Do you have a sad sound, soundtrack that you listen to? When I'm in a really sad place, which is ironic because even when I'm not in a sad place, I like the music, but I always listen to classical classical music. Um, Ludovizio Anaudi is, like, one of my favorite composers. Mm. Uh, Fabrizio Polatti, I think, is his other. I listen to, like, really old-school classical... Um, Strings and... Piano. The... Oh, piano. Um, and it's so miserably sad and... Fuck, I love it. Yeah. I love it. I don't know. I don't know why. I, I just, it's just so deep. A piano is a, such a sad instrument for some reason to me. It can be. Yeah, I can. It doesn't have to be, but for me, it always was. Mm -hmm. The depth of those, of the chords always seemed just sad. Yeah. When, when played in this fashion. Sure, you know. I'm sure that's great. But for some reason, piano slowly always has this sombering thing yeah. for me. What's your sad music? Uh, have you seen the Batman? <laughs> There's something in the way. Ooh. No, um, but uh, uh, Mad World is one of them. That song is so fucking... It's a... Uh, Mad World All around me are familiar faces Worn out places Worn out places. Dude, it's, it is so hurtful. That song, also, I do like, um, there are songs that, you know, Golden Brown. Golden Brown, texture like sun, lays me down. In and my mind, mind she runs, runs throughout, throughout the, the night. night. No, no need, need to, to fight. fight. Never, Never a frown with golden, golden brown. brown. Dude, that song is, and I wish we could play it, but we'll get there's some. There's some uh, Simon and Garfunkel. I mean, 100%. The, the Lighty Dies. Woo. Lighty Dies. Die. <laughs> yeah. La -da 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 -da. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. La -da -da. <laughs> it's just a car door slamming. He's like, yeah, that kind of stuff. Or like really old slow music. You know, William Bell. Do you know that? Mm-mm. I forgot to be your lover. Like, I, yeah, there's so much sad music, but uh, for some reason, that old classical shit, I'll send you off with some when you leave. And, okay. Oh, dude. If it's a long ride home somewhere, like, <laughs> I don't know where we, <laughs> where we were driving from, me and uh, Chris O'Connor, the guy that comes with me on the road. I, I, we, I don't know where we were driving. Cleveland to, to Pitt, maybe, or something like that? Yeah, it's a decent drive. It was like one of those Midwest yeah. runs, you know? <laughs> and and in the beginning we had on like talking heads and I was and then later I was just jamming to really sad shit and just the humming of the of the wheels and the nothingness of the road it just uh, it caves in on your brain you're like what am I doing with my life is this worth it yeah it is though because look you could be back at Starbucks making a double mocha oh frappuccino. dude I'm always. So freaking grateful to be doing comedy full time. And Two everything. years at Starbucks, and then what? Did you ever work another shitty day job? No, I got very fortunate. Um, you had the lottery. Eh, booked a national commercial. That was the lottery that back a lot. then. That's what I mean. Yeah, you the lottery. Yeah, yeah. And that, and then, what was the natty for? Uh, Chevy Volt. Huge. Yeah. And those things back in the day paid for yes. you know a couple years, right? Pa paid a, a year of my bills straight. That's awesome. So, and people kept asking me, they're like, "So, what are you spending your money on?" I go rent and food because i'm going to do comedy i'm not gonna sure. people kept like you're gonna buy a car you're gonna buy this i'm like no i'm gonna use that that's gonna be literally my deposit on my new life my new life yeah and then you slowly built after that and, and got then and got enough and got and got. you know what i mean like it, enough i was able to get little gigs here and there acting stuff comedy stuff here and there where like i could keep sustaining obviously some years were harder than others as it always is but like I haven't had a day job since uh, the beginning of 2012. Look at this guy. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah, dude. Good for you, dude. You. That's. I mean, one thing really does crack it sometimes. I remember when I got to quit my my day job forever, and that's like the moment is cool. 
Because I booked a national. I booked a Mike's Hard Lemonade commercial. But it wasn't enough money back then. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think it was enough to sustain. And it was a, it wasn't, it, they didn't run. Although they ran it all the fucking time, but they made us seem like they weren't going to run it. Like I would get phone calls and be like, you're on ESPN. Because it was for NASCAR season, like the height of NASCAR season, which is all the time. I did a coffee bean commercial that was, I literally got paid like 500 bucks for it. It was like a non-union thing. And it mm -hmm. played on Hulu nonstop. And I, I almost got more eyes on that than... See, we should be able to fucking sue for that for back, back, back wages. You know, I think that's called reparations. I think that's not for us. Oh, I looked into it. Oh, you did. White reparations. White reps, yeah, white reparations. And and uh, the first response was, "What's up? Are you kidding me?" Google just responds, "Did you mean to type this at all? <laughs> <laughs> did you mean to close your laptop and throw it out the window uh -huh. immediately?" Yeah. We do deserve, whites do deserve reparations. You know, mm. Jeremiah's been saying that for a long, long time. I've been time. saying, yeah, that's been my campaign, you know. White reps, white reparations. What do you got there? Oh, I got a little gift for you. Can I see this beautiful piece of artwork that you've mm -hmm. got? I saw it a little bit in the hallway, but I, oh my God, look at how cool this is. It's pretty dope. Wow, this is so sick for our friends at home so you can see. Yeah. This is a Scissor Bros Bad Friends collab. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I should do it at this camera or the other one. Yeah. A Scissor Bros Bad Friends collab. Uh, who is this drawn by? Joel Stokes. He does art for Scissor Bros every week. And he, uh, when we were doing the the wow. Bad Friends and Scissor Bros crossover stuff, uh, you know, when we had Rudy on the show and Doc on the show. So like, cool, We did dude. like an X-Men themed, uh, so you're Sabretooth. And I think Bobby's the blob. He's the blob for sure, but yeah, the yeah. muscly blob. Also, by the way, I want to point out, you guys, Andres, Rudy, Doc, are on our show, and yet you've painted them as your team. Yeah. It's because we took them for a little while. No, they're ours. Well, we took them. We rented them, you know. I don't like this. Oh. Imagine I rip it right in half. <laughs> oh, man, Tino. Doc. Come oh, on, man. Come what on, are you man. Doing, man. Tino, what the? Man, come on, I did like one that. episode on Bad Friends. <laughs> <laughs> scissor Bros. Come on, come on, man. man. You know I ain't part of Scissor Bros, Tito. <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Damn, he, man. This, this dude, uh, he opened for me, or hosted. Down and thank you for that. This is really yeah, sweet. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's gonna go right in the trash. He hosted down mm -hmm. in Irvine, and uh, did really great actually. And I was worried because when I took him down to San Diego, I was like, Doc, do like ten to twelve minutes because we had other people on the show, and he did like twenty seven minutes. <laughs> yeah, man, you know I didn't see the light, Tino. And at a theater show, the stage, the clock is right at your feet, literally at your feet. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's uh, unmistakable. It's where your toes are. Is a huge fucking digital clock. It says right on it. I thought it was 27 o'clock, man. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Tino. I didn't mean that, man. <laughs> but we laughed. We let him go. But, you know, I was just like, Doc, don't, let's not do a repeat. <laughs> let's not do that again. Can I tell you something? Down yeah. in Irvine, all four shows, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> he did 10 minutes and a half, 10 and a half oh, minutes dude. on the nose. He's a crusher. Yeah, he did a great job. I was really proud of him. Yeah. I was really proud. I was like, he because also, he's an experienced comic, but like he was super professional and you know, I'll never work with him again, but it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. He's not worth it. I'll never see him ever again, at, you know, okay. on the stage. But All right. well, good he's, guy. He's doing shows with me next weekend, so. <sighs> You've taken another one, Jeremiah. Another one. <laughs> Some would say you and Steve are the gay me and Bobby. What do you respond to that? Um, If it can get gayer than you and Bobby, I guess so. Ooh. Ooh. Sick little burn. Yeah, it was. There's nothing gay about Bobby and I. Cut to uh, a him kissing my penis at the first episode we ever did. Together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big deal. What is is that the is that the height of the gaydom for you guys? With Bo unfortunately with Bobby, I'm comfortable enough with my sexuality that none of that stuff bothers me at all. Well, you did that. You did that bathtub naked thing, right? With uh, with little Dicky. What are you talking about? No, with Bob. Didn't you do an episode where you're both like oh, naked in a, oh, bath, in he a bathtub? Yeah, in Mexico. Yeah, he was. He was fully nude. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. But that's but that's Bobby more than anything else. Yeah, Bobby yeah, wants yeah. to be, he is a nudist. He's an exhibitionist. Have you? Have, are you comfortable with your body naked? Would you get naked on camera for the show? Yeah, if we censor it, yeah. I've had to, yeah, we've had to done, uh, we've had to do a couple things that like, the most uncomfortable thing that I did, I lost uh, one of our challenges. Mm-hmm. We were playing Jenga, and Steve came up with this game called Toe Jenga, where the loser had to suck on the winner's toe. No thanks. Big pass. Dude, I freaking lost somehow. You sucked on Stevie's toe? 
Yeah. No fucking. It was. Did you go get tested? I gag. I literally. It was the hard. One of the hardest I've gagged in my entire life. Mm. I've never even put my wife's foot in my mouth. I'm not a fuck. I hate feet. It's oh, a you, thing. Oh, you are you I one of those guys? Feet. And he didn't know this about me. I'm like, I don't know if I can do this. And and he goes, he goes, you got to, man. You, you got to. <laughs> <laughs> and then I like I did it. I just I was dry. He it was horrible. By the way, you've never put your wife's foot in your mouth. Do it. Try it once. Really? I bet your wife has nice feet. She does have nice feet. I'm sure she has clean feet. Freaking suck on, nicer than Steve's. Dude, suck on a toe, bud. Yeah? You been there? Yeah, oh, yeah. You popped a toe in? I'll suck on a couple of little piggies. Yeah, a little cuticle. This I one went it. to the market. Yeah. Ooh. This one went to Gelson's. <laughs> this one went to John's, not Vaughn's, because it's on a budget. Mm. One of them's on a budget. In here, we pour whiskey. Hey, when that moment for intimacy arrives, sometimes the blood flow is not what it used to be, okay? The pipes are a little clogged as you get older. And I gotta tell you something, even though uh, people get weirded out about it, ED is not that big of a deal. It happens to millions upon millions upon millions of men, all right? It's not that big of a deal. The truth is, 52% of guys age 40 to 70 experience some form of erectile dysfunction. Ding dong, hello, who's there? You're not alone. It's a whole party of people that are just like you. So do not fret, okay? ED is more common than most people think. The benefits of ED treatment can help you reconnect with your partner, rediscover the joys of sex. Um, you know, the best part is it, it's discreet when it comes to your door. There's no labels. Nobody knows what you're getting. It's not their business, okay? U.S. licensed healthcare professional will work with you to find the best treatment plan, and if medication is necessary, all right, and it's appropriate, they ship to you for free with two-day shipping, free to your front door, and nobody knows what's in that secret little box except for you. Getting started is simple. Just go to GetRoman.com slash whiskey. Complete your online visit. Take care of your ED without leaving the comfort of your own home. Complete an online visit today to connect with a U.S. licensed healthcare professional to take care of it. Go to GetRoman.com slash whiskey today, and if you're prescribed, get $15 off your first month of ED treatment. Make sure you're ready to have confidence and control this fall. Roman ready. Hey, if you're building a website, you're selling something, you're producing, you want to put out your words on the internet. I've talked about Squarespace for the last couple of years, and I got to tell you, I believe in them, I use them, I promote them because I dig them. I think uh, what Squarespace does is pretty impressive. Um, they really have tried to change their focus to help entertainers, performers, uh, artists, people that are pushing out content. Um, I think it's pretty incredible. They got uh, appointment scheduling, they got video studio, email campaigns that help you organize. They, got, they can connect all your social media accounts um, and the analytics is probably the best thing. For us, I love the analytics to find out where the people are coming from on the internet. And you can use insights to grow your business, learn where your site visits and sales are coming from to analyze which channels are most effective, improve your website, and build a marketing strategy based on your top keywords and popular products and content. What this helps us do is find out where the fans at. Where the fans at? We want to know. They have all this great stuff for you uh, and much, much more. And the best part about it is Look, you can do it all by yourself if you if you if you fashion yourself a fancy web designer. But uh, my favorite thing is that they help you. Squarespace provides beautiful templates for you, and they let you know how you can do this with their help. They've got twenty four seven award winning customer support, um, and all this stuff can help you kind of build the proper site for you to push out what you need to push out. Uh, head over to squarespace.com/whiskey. Squarespace.com/whiskey. For a free trial, when you're ready to launch, use the offer code WHISKEY to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's right, squarespace.com slash whiskey. Free trial, you're ready to launch, use the offer code WHISKEY. Save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Ginger. I like gingers. Where do you get your groceries from? Uh, w mainly between, it's a, between Trader Joe's, Ralph's, and Plus. Amazon Prime. Am Prime is the, so Whole Foods. Because Amazon Prime is Whole Foods. Is it? Yeah. Interesting. I mean, Amazon and Whole Foods are one. They own, they own them now. Yeah. You know who stocks those? Who? Doc. Yeah, man. Yeah, no, I'll be stocking that grocery. I do your groceries, Tino. That's yeah. literally what he does. I do the Whole Foods. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, they moving me over to Whole Foods, but, you know, we'll see. Because he works for Amazon. So Amazon has a stock room, but they also now are sourcing from Whole Foods. But any, that's a good answer. TJ's was number one for you. Respect oh, on TJ's. Sprouts sometimes. I they did not home run pizza. Sprouts. Home they run, do? yes. Home run pizza. Added to Sprouts right after the show, dude. It's literally the best frozen pizza that I've found. What's your Midwest fat food that you miss? Ooh, well, you were never a fat kid. Just You've barbecue. always been just barbecue. Yeah, KC barbecue. I always get Joe's when I go back there. You like Oklahoma Joe's? That's my favorite. It's interesting. I'm a Gates guy. Gates is good, but I like Joe's way more. Less. There's less black people at Joe's. I get what you're saying. 
Jeremiah is an outright racist, and it doesn't matter what color of brown his shoes or sweater are, we know how he feels about people with melanin. Well. Oklahoma Joe's is good. Gates is always better to me because I like the white bread shit. I like the old school Wonder Bread. I like that too, but yeah. I mean, we're talking ribs and stuff too? I'm not a big rib guy, dude. Oh, okay. Well, this is where we... I know. know. See, ribs are fine. I, I know people love them, but I like brisket. I like burnt ends. Have you I, had the Z-Man sandwich at Joe's? I don't know. I mean, I have enough Kansas friends where over the years they fed me all the shit that I'm well, supposed to eat. I know. To eat. You, you introduced me to Travis Kelsey. I did. It was, it was a nice... Then? Did I introduce you to Pat? Uh, he was still watching the show, so... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, you introduced me to Kelsey. And he's I got, very, very nice. That's just co- complete coincidence, by the way, because I went to college with a bunch of Kansas City dudes, and literally, like, five of my good friends are from KC. Yeah. Uh, and then <clears throat> when I went to California... Mm, at least none of them really came. A lot of them stayed in Arizona or they moved back. I just saw them when I was back in KC. And then I became friends with Travis through, you know, something organically we were going to work together. But it just so happened that it was KC. Like, it was just kind of a coincidence that he plays for Kansas City, some of my closest best friends. You know what I mean? It was just this weird, it was just like pure luck. And then, you know, meeting Pat and him through, through through that crew. They're good dudes, man. You got a great football team too. Jealous. Yeah, they're going to be good for a while. It's going to be fun. They are going to be good for a fucking long time. Yeah. And that's so annoying. Not it's a, annoying not, to me. Not at all for me. Yeah, it's good we, for We you. grew up with uh, being very cursed. Not that bad. Uh, we had some field goal cursed years for a Sure, but I mean, you like know, that. you also, the Royals have always had an up and down, up and down. They've mainly been down. You got a World Series under your belt, don't you? Well, we've got a couple now. Yeah, but the so last one was 85 before. So what? I mean, who the fuck are you talking to? I'm a Cubs fan, dude. Yeah, cubby this, cubby that. Excuse me? Yeah. Excuse me? Yeah, I said it. Excuse me? Yeah, cubby, uh, my cubbies. What does that mean? Mm. What does that even mean? Uh, Wrigley. George Brett's a piece of shit. You take that back. George Brett, George Brett sexually assaulted my little brother. No, 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 no. Yes, he did. Sammy Sosa? He also assaulted my little brother. Okay. Good. When he said, when Sammy said baseball had been very, very good to me, baseball is my little brother's nickname. No. Yeah. He's like, baseball had been very, very good to me. That was, it was us, it was threatening our Wait, family. Is your brother Sammy's pinch hitter? You know what I'm saying? Well, he always let him play with his ball bag, I'll tell you that. He got in his dugout? Oh, yeah. Yeah? It was a home run every time. Ooh, 3 2? Full count. <laughs> <laughs> Baseball talk, someone at home is like, I get none of these jokes. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. Yeah. You're not going to get all of them, audience. Nope. You're going to get 76 to 79% of them. And you can know, you can do that tallying right now if you feel like it. What did you get? Imagine a kid at home did Comment below. He's like 86, 87% actually. It's pretty, pretty fucking close. Um, I do, I do want to pick a bone, bone a pick. Let's do it. I do want your kid. So I don't know what we're going to do to get this done, but I do have to have the kid. I know we did a bit on the show. Yeah. But since you haven't paid, you haven't paid me in a while. Can you like maybe take him on? Like, I know we're both on the road, so obviously weekends is not ideal for you. No, I'd love to have him on the weekends. You'd love to have him on the weekends? He fits in a bag, right? In a luggage bag. I mean, you got to check him. No, no, no. I, I can, I'll put him in the, I'll put him under my seat. Yeah? Like a laptop? First class, baby. Yeah, he'll sneak on. He'll sneak under there. Oh, like my dog. There's be, more room up there, isn't there? My dog and him. Oh, okay. Have you flown first class before? Only on accident. What do you mean? They upgraded <laughs> you? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I've, I've, there's been a handful of flights that uh, I want to say one time, you the best it. treatment I I've ever had, it, by the way. HBO crashing when we did crashing. They did first class for us round trip. To that, New York. Yeah. That that's was a, a that's, that's a good. great first class trip. Was it the lay downs where they go all the way down or no? Yeah. The lay flats, I mean. Yeah, it was awesome. That's hot, isn't it? Yeah. I was, so I've only yeah, only a couple times first class. It's pretty fancy. But every once in a while I'll get those free upgrades just because I'm flying all the time now, where I'll get like, you know, that extended or I'll get that exit and then I'm like, oh, <laughs> exit for me, that's all I want. For me, that was it for a long time. I would beg for exit. Oh, I love them. When we have if you got long I legs, love man, it's, exit. it's a nightmare. Yeah. Sitting in regular seats stinks. It's so hard over the years. You just get, you're like in pain for half of the flight. And I then to, you stand up a lot. You stand up a lot. No, I, yeah, I burrow and then I sleep the whole time. You're able to do that? 
yeah, but then my back is sometimes messed up later because I I wake up and I'm like, oh, oh. what was that? That's oh. how you wake up? Ah. Oh, oh, yeah, <laughs> real stiff, like you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. like you know, it's like praying mantis legs like inside of a. God, it's so it's so uncomfortable. Yeah, and you and mom, you still. I mean, that's what I consider the job part. That Getting is to riff the job. and do stand up. That's that's the fun part. Yeah, the, the job shows is traveling. Yeah. Getting to the hotels, you'd get there and they're like, well, your room's not ready. And you're like, I just. How often does that actually happen to you, though? All, uh, shit happens. For some reason on the road, if the road is always so discombobulated. But how do you approach the concierge? I go, what's up, bitch? Where's my fucking room? And they're like, your room's not ready, sir. I'm like, God damn it. If you go in with a gentle tone. Approach me. I'm the concierge. Or I'm the, I'm the bell, de bell person. The, okay. Whatever. I work at the front desk. Right. Hi, uh, hey. welcome to the Red Roof Inn. How can I help you? Hey, uh, I was hoping to uh, you know what I mean? check in uh, uh, right now if that's, if that's possible. Oh, you know what? It's only 2.12 right now, and we usually don't uh, have check-in until 4 in the p.m., but if we can hold your bags, uh, you can tour around uh, beautiful Pittsburgh, and we'll hold your bags until you... Uh, would you mind checking if there's any rooms possible open? That would be great if, if... I just told you that they're not ready till 4. Uh, yeah, I, I was hoping you could maybe make uh, an exception. This is the the the, early, the latest flight I could get before check in time, and I'm just I'm about to I have to go to work pretty soon. What's your What's your name? What's your last name? Uh, Watkins. Watkins. Yeah. Oh, I see you right here. Mm -hmm. Reservation canceled. Goodbye, Jeremiah. Have a good day. Uh, can you still hold my bags for me? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. By the way, yeah, I'd yeah. love to hold your bags. Okay, great. Now get out. Okay, thank you. Now get out. All right. I'm I'm leaving. I'm Get out. What are you drinking? I'm drinking. You're drinking on drinking the job. Drinking on the job. Okay, fine. Can I have this? Yeah, what is that? It's a rabbit hole. Better believe it. Slow down with that water, bud. I don't want you to lose your mind there. You guys were trying to feed me Red Bull when I did your show and I can't have Red Bull. Why not? Bad for my ticker. Do you have a bad heart? <sighs> That's a deep question. <laughs> um, no, I have a, uh, I have a, a murmur. What was that? I have a hole in my heart. Uh, what? I have a murmur. Murmur? I have a murmur. Mm -hmm. I have a murmur. Blood flows irregularly, I think, through a hole, I think is what it is. Mm. So, touring upsets it? Touring? Touring. Touring? Oh, touring. Touring. Sorry. Not touring the country. Taurine, I think one of the active ingredients of Red Bull, it upsets it. Every time I've ever had it, I feel like shit, and I'll get palpitations. Did you get a, even a little bit after you drank it on Scissor Bros? No, it was such a small amount. Yeah, it was a small amount. Yeah. No, but if I drank a full can, yeah, which is weird because I could drink coffee. No problem. I have like three cups of coffee a day. Energy drinks are just a different ball. I think they're so bad for you, and I love them. This episode is sponsored by what we're, energy drink? We're sponsored by Red Bull. Thick nuts. Scissor Bros. Are you sponsored by Red Bull? Product sponsor. Did they send you a, a little fridge, a Red Bull fridge? No, they say they don't have any in right now, but they sent us like some cases of, of Red Bull. They don't have any in? That, get, they're, that they're willing to give us yeah, right now? Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Red Bull, get your shit together and give these guys a fucking fridge. Don't make me come down there. You know, I shouldn't shit talk on Red Bull, but you know they did steal that. It's a stolen. You should look at it. You should look it up. They stole Red Bull? Red Bull stole Red Bull. The guy who introduced Red Bull to the to Western Europe took it. It's a, I think it's from Thailand. You should look it up. Okay, maybe I will. It used to have bull sperm in it. That's what I heard. That was real. Yeah, it's like Coke used to have Coke in it. But we don't we don't talk about that stuff. It's like Epstein's Island. We know it's real, but we don't want to talk about it. Yeah, I uh, you a... you don't believe in Epstein's Island. I know you've told me that. He's like my Santa Claus. Yeah, magic man. Magic man. How did he make it with all those women on, on such a short amount of time around the world? <laughs> That's your Santa Claus, baby. That's my Santa you Claus. Got, and you got to believe. You have to believe in him. I feel like you believed in Santa Claus for a, a long time. Too long. Did you? Mm hmm What are we talking? How old were you when you realized? Mm, 13? Well, here's the thing. My mom would do this thing for years where she's like, you're not going to get any presents unless you believe in Santa Claus. But you're not an only child. No, I've got an older brother, younger sister. So, so you still were tricked, even with siblings around that that had your we older all, we brother. We all played into it. We all played into it. But the older brother, did he ruin it for you? 
No, I mean it was, was one it like J Dog. You no, know, it was Santa's people at school that were like, they were like, Santa's not real. I'm like, yeah, he is. And yeah. they're like, dude, you're a freshman. I'm like, he's real, guys. <laughs> he's real to me, okay. <laughs> when when <laughs> did your brother ruin stuff for you like that when you were a kid? Uh like did he do the sex talk? Did you hear from your brother? No, I didn't get the sex talk. Did your brother ever tell you about girls or anything like that, or was that not his thing? No, he had a lot of girlfriends. I would like observe him, like, but we never like talked about it. Like we 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 talked years later, like after the fact, like, but yeah, we I would see him with girls, but I didn't know that he was having sex with them. How old were you? How was the the age difference? He's three years older. Than oh, me. So that's the, your freshman. He's a senior. Yeah. Cool older brother. Yeah. You walk in so high school. He had school. a lot of girlfriends. I didn't know he was having sex with them, but he was. Yeah. How was he like? Kind of like a. He he, he always had pipe? an easy time with girls, and you didn't. No. What like when did you get a girlfriend? I well, it wasn't that I had a bad time. It's like I was so, like, blinders on always that mm -hmm. I it just wasn't like a like a, a thing where I was like I gotta get a girlfriend. What do it you mean just, blinders on? Like uh, with you really I've always had you're really religious. No, no, not blinders with religion. Blinders with whatever I my passion was at the time. If I had blinders on, like when I was playing sports, I was a thousand percent into sports. Mm. When I started doing uh, like filmmaking and broadcasting and editing and all that stuff, blinders on with that. Right. And then when I moved to LA, I was blinders on with improv. But I met my wife doing improv, and it was that's you know kind of a weird loophole that happened. So you had your blinders led you to the place that you needed to be. Yeah. So you heard that here, kids. Put blinders on. You don't need to focus on anything except the things that you love and the thing that you need will come along with it. Yeah. We'll be right back. All right. We're not going anywhere. Okay, perfect. But you think about that, that's probably the truth. You hear that phrase a lot when you're a kid is like, I, I always hate it when someone's like, don't focus on the money, don't focus. And you're like, shut the fuck up. I'm, I can't pay rent this month. You know, I always hated to hear that stuff when someone says that, but there is a, there is a level of truth to it for sure. But it's hard to see that truth when you're working it's multiple jobs. It's very hard to see it when out, you're in it. Like and you when you can't it, rub two nickels together. The amount of times I've heard like enjoy the process or you know that that whole thing. Yes, you're supposed to. Mm. We're all supposed to. It's a very hard thing to do while you're in it really struggling where you're like I don't know if I'm going to be able to pay my bills. This process is killing me right now. Yeah. But I mean, if you if you stay like I don't know. I think if you really are legit about it and and stay true to yourself and and do that, it will eventually happen. I think it have obviously, yeah. obviously for everybody has their own path and their track. But what about Jonathan Brandis? Keep bringing that guy up, huh? <laughs> Should have never brought up the freaking ladybug. <laughs> that was and, you, dude. That was all me. It was you? You're a ladybug guy. Yeah, ladybug guy. And then I brought up Paul Walker for no reason. Mm -mm, two for two on the bad news bears yeah, over there. Too fast, dude. I'm taking a moment of silence for Paul Walker. That was the first celebrity that died that I was bummed, like actually bummed about when people were making jokes on Twitter. Yeah, that was crazy. I was like, oh, man. Dude, because I liked him. Me too. You know what? He's family. He's family. He's family. Get over here. Somebody recently told me that Vin Diesel was not, uh, not as so nice. Uh, and I was like, really? Really? Vin? <laughs> Vinny D. Vinny D, not a nice guy? You're talking about Vinny D. You're talking about Chronicles of Riddick here, not You're being nice? Talking about Vinny D. Come on. He seems like he'd be all right. He had everything in the world just given to him for well, sure. He was, a, he was a nightclub guy. He was a bouncer at a nightclub. Was he? Yeah. Fuck. Yep, that's what I heard. Those should have been my blinders. I should have been a bouncer at a nightclub. Just put all your effort into that? Whoa, 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 whoa. We're full. Yeah. Uh, you need to check your list again. Check your little list. <laughs> What's your name? Douchebag? Oh! The other bouncers love it. The girls think it's funny. You're embarrassed. Go ahead. Yo, I look for douchebag, and it's not on here. Listen, man. Uh, let me see. I give you a little something. To help me. Is this a 20? Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Oh! You, play, you ate your own money. <laughs> this guy, man. You're good. You're good. I'll let you in. Yeah. Just you, though. What about the six women I'm with? They're all gross. What? These are, these are my sisters. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You better watch your mouth. 
They're all hags. That one's a four. That one's a two. I guess if you add them up, you might get a nine. Oh. You know what? I like your style. Thanks. What are you doing later? Fucking one of your sisters. <clears throat> oh. Bring you back. <clears throat> you don't like it. Yeah. Can I watch? You got it. Back to the cock stuff, dude. I know. That's I like I, you go back to the cock stuff. That's what I that's what I did. How much fun is it working with Steve for real? Do you love it? I love it. Yeah. He's yeah. a because he's, he's a nightmare, but in a good way. Yeah. We're a good balance for each other. Yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah. You're like the gay me and Bobby. Is that what it is? That's what the fans say. Is that what they say? They go, these guys are like the gay bad friends. Mm, I don't know if they say that. That's what all the fans say. I don't know. They say that Steve is the younger one. <laughs> yeah. Is he young? Oh, yeah. He is young. How old is he? 26. Get out of town. He looks good for 26. Dude, you know what? I just said that like Sebastian. Get out of town. Get out of town. I saw a girl today wearing a Sebastian Maniscalco merch. And I, not I that this, I didn't, I didn't think he had merch. I literally was just about to say the exact same thing, yeah. and I don't know why I would think that he didn't when he's one of the biggest comics. Because he seems like he's like, I don't need to do that. I don't merch do the merch. Okay. Shh, it's embarrassing. Aren't you embarrassing? He's selling shirts. Why would you put your face on a t-shirt? But his was it was like a um, an ombre shirt or sweater, and it said Sebastian Maniscalco and really nice print, and then whatever the tour was. Why would you do that tour or whatever? Mm -hmm. But that's it. Nothing on the back, and then that it's was always, on the front. It's always questions with him. Why would you do that? Aren't, Aren't you embarrassed? embarrassed? Who's the father? Are these eggs bad? What's going on here? Can you tie my shoes? Is that me in the mirror? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to the man in the mirror. What? What? That's his next special. What? Why? 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 He, he has five specials. What? Where? Why? When? when who? And then, but who? Who never comes out? Yeah. That's cold as ice. It's just a picture of him. Me. No, it says me. Just me. What, what where, why, why, when, me. me. Oh, Sebastian. <laughs> you, do it. It's a box set. Can you imagine him he's eating cereal listening to this podcast? Never. Mm -hmm. But he's like, I should do that. Wait a second. <laughs> these, That's a great idea. These gingers have something I think I like. Do you categorize yourself as one of us? No, You're but not. people have been categorizing me as it has been driving me crazy. Who? You're not a redhead at all. Your hair is fucking brown. Dude, thank If you. anything, you've got somewhat of a blonde in there somewhere. I used to be very blonde. It's gotten darker as I've gotten, as I've gotten a little yeah, older. Yeah, it's brown. Yeah. No, nah, it's brown. You're not a redhead. You're not one of us. Amen. You got light eyes, uh, light eyebrow hair, light facial hair, but yeah. it's blonde, if anything. Yeah, it's blonde. Yeah, we don't want you. Okay. Look at your arm hair. That's a telltale sign. That's blonde. This. Thank you. Oh my thank you, thank you, goodness! Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Ginger. Oh snap! God, it's just it's just. Uh, Do you still burn easily? You know, living in the sun for this many years. You golf a lot. Yeah, but I put on. <laughs> I should have stock and sun bum. But live. I, you know, I haven't lived in Midwest winter weather for. 19 years? I still crack and bleed in the winter. Well, my knuckles crack because they get dry when I play sports all winter. Like yeah. if I play golf and basketball. And stuff. So they do, yeah, I do, but I have to put on extra lotion. Mm -hmm. You lotion your whole body when you get out of the shower? No, I should. You should. See, so should I. Yeah. The old lady says that. She's like, you got to put And I just yeah, don't do it. We're going to have bad it. skin when we're older, but for now you're fine. Look at your face. It looks great. Yeah. Yeah. But you, the wrinkles will catch up. I know. I smile. Let me see you smile. You don't have a lot of wrinkles on your forehead. Now you do. Yeah, I know. What about no crow's net? No crow's feet, though. Not yet. I got him a little bit. You know, I actually don't give a shit. I saw a girl at breakfast the other day, and and and, and her her boyfriend or whatever made her laugh. She's like, "Stop it! Stop it! Stop it!" Oh. And she had just gotten fillers and stuff done. Oh. And she was saying it. She they were kind of both laughing. She's like, "Stop! Because you can't. I don't want to. Um, I don't want to fuck it up." But you know what? It's fine. You do whatever you want to do, but. I think getting older in the face is okay. I don't know. I always think that women end up looking very strange after they get work done. If you get too much, it does look yeah. weird. A little bit is usually unnoticeable. When women that you don't know, like they're like older celebrities, 
Yeah, they had TV good stars. light work done. Yeah, and then you yeah. never know, and you're like, oh, she just looks great. And you're like, well, she fucking, she definitely had something done. She's 68 years old. Yeah, she has yeah, no wrinkles. Yeah. But it is interesting when they go down that path when you're like, oh, no, they went astray. Yeah. You can tell right away when it goes, the, when it's like. Ooh. People got bummed when Renee Zellweger, like when she got pl uh, plastic surgery. It just didn't look like her, and her face is so distinct. If you don't really have a distinct face, I think she you can looks get away like with a it. different person than the different Bridget Jones. I, I like I walked in on my wife watching a Bridget D Jones, like one of the second or third ones or whatever. Yeah, and I was like, "Is that her? Is that the same? Act? It's completely different." I know. So this is our plea, Renee Zellweger. <laughs> <laughs> Wedger. <laughs> her name is as odd as her look was too. Mm -hmm. She just looked so like. She kind of looked like she did, she looked like someone who did have work done, but didn't get it. Done. Yeah, not yet. And then she got the work done. And you're like, oh, that's what it looks like. It looked like they prepped her to get work done and never happened. Mm. Like you know, they started construction, but they know you know, but people yeah. were late on the payment, so they just yeah. left it like that. She was still like on the preheat of the oven. Yeah. Oh my god. I don't know what that is with my dog when we preheat the oven. It's I think everything low to the ground that ticks. She doesn't like. Mm. She was a bomb rescue dog in her previous life, so any kind of ticking. No, anything like tick, 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 like rhythmic, like that, like the oven when it's heating up, it does that, and she fucking freaks out. She not like hip hop. She doesn't like black people. Uh. We took her to the. She's black. Relax. We took her to the vet today, and they clipped her fucking nails. And boy, do I want to call out the vet. They fucking cut her. Made her bleed. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I was. They like, should what? do that to my wiener dog in Kansas, where you, they, they draw blood, and you're like, "What are you? What are you doing?" But also, like, we've clipped her nails before at the house, mm -hmm. and we've never done that. You have to go really low. To, I know. Yeah. I was pissed. It's All it is is them them going too fast. Yeah, they don't give a shit. Yeah, they're not caring about their But job. I was bummed out, dude, because she was bleeding, and she could tell she well, was in pain. they're in pain for a while Yeah, she afterwards. was in pain, you could yeah. tell. And she was licking it a lot, and then I took I gave her a bath uh, so it would, like, soothe her paw, you know? Mm -hmm. And, dude, she could st I could still tell. So it made me mad. So then we called, and we were like, hey, you fucking made her bleed. It was a lot. Like, it was a lot. Yeah. And then, oh, um, do you think she needs stitches? You can bring her back immediately. We're so sorry to leave her in that condition, blah, blah, blah. But I was like, isn't this the place of all places where they have to have, like, the utmost care? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Of all the fucking places, isn't that the spot where they're, like, the most overt, careful with animals? I think, but so, I had a lot of turtles, you know? Turtles aren't real. Okay. Describe the Ninja Turtles, then. Those weren't turtles. Yeah, they were. They were ninja turtles. There's a different breed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They grew from ooze into the ninja turtles. Dog, ninja turtle is a different breed of turtle. It's not the same thing. It's the same as a turtle. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. No, it is not. Okay. Is a goldfish the same as a fish? Yeah. No, it's gold. I think your logic is slightly skewed here, friend. You questioning my logic on my own show? Yeah, I am. You're you fucking know, pushing it, buddy. I think you and I are probably, we are kindred spirits because you and I are the only ones who work with the Lee brothers. That's true. In a, in, in in a, a very, very intimate, close way. Yeah. It drives me nuts. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, I'll, what's 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 a thing that drives you nuts and then I'll give you a thing that, gives, that drives <laughs> <okay>. me nuts? <laughs> well, not anymore, to be honest with you, but he used to, uh, Bobby used to be late every Ooh. fucking time we podcasted that's a hard one every time without fail so then we would tell him the wrong time then fancy got smart and he would he'd be like come at 7 30 and you know we knew he'd come at eight and we'd start at eight yeah he, um, we used to do super late night shoots when we first started the show we would do super late sometimes we'd be like 11 or midnight that's how we started off uh with scissor bros same thing because Steve's sleep schedule is a, is a real thing well that was bobby's too yeah Bobby yeah. used to sleep until four or five so we couldn't record before then yeah so, okay, that's my gripe, was he used to be late. Not anymore, which I, I love him. He's on time now. What's yours? <laughs> I love you, Steve, if you're watching. He's not. He's probably not. Uh, he does this thing where I'll tell him something. I'll be like, hey, man, uh, we need to record tomorrow at 2 o'clock because uh, I have to go out of town earlier this week for a stand-up weekend. Sure. And he goes... Well, you didn't tell me that. I go, I'm telling you right now. I think you did this on the show with right me. Right now. Something happened. No, he literally did it on the show with you as well. Yeah. He does this, though, almost every single week. He goes, you didn't tell me that. I go, 
Steve, I'm telling you right now. When would he prefer you tell him, do you think? You well, think he wants to like no, no, no. know via email in advance? Oh, no, no, no. We, our communication has to be really good or or we start butting heads a little bit. Would you argue? Just more like, I th- I think he d- doesn't I th- want to be left out of the loop. Like feel like he's like not being told everything. You know what I mean? But you don't, you can't tell him everything. Because if you tell him everything, it's just the world is too big for him. He's like Kimmy Schmidt a little bit. You think so? A little bit. I don't know. I think he. I, I think he would prefer to know. I think he b- would prefer to just know and then be like, "Okay, thank you for telling me that." And he'll go, "Oh, oh, 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 okay, yeah, that no, that's cool, man. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah." yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then the other thing about uh, the booger is, um, he 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 projects like crazy, like he'll say something. As if it's me that does it. When it's in actuality, it's just ex- it's ex- exclusively him. Mm-hmm. We did this episode about having a god complex, and he was like, "You have it." I'm like, "No one, nobody on earth has as much of a complex uh, as, as he does." You. Yeah, yeah. It's unreal. Like he, the way he's bosses them around, and it's endearing for the fans. They think it's cute, but I know the reality. Yeah, that he really does get upset and right. bosses people around. But it's like he does it in a loving way, so no one ever gets mad at him. But if I did it. He'd be like, fucking Santino's an asshole. Right, right, right. Oh my God, yeah. Yeah, people get so angry. There's like, um, with tripod, sometimes it's like, you know, we're setting up shoots and stuff like that, and I'll ask him like, hey, we break down the tripod? And he doesn't do this anymore because we this would be something that would, I'm like, I can't, I can't do it. Like, you got to do this on your own. He start taking down the tripod and then he kept, he'd keep looking over and go, like this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Steve? <laughs> It's a tripod. You got this, brother. And he goes, yeah. okay. Two seconds later, like this. Which is him saying, will you do it? Right. Yeah, that's him going, please and I'm like, do it. Please. And then like, we're good. We're good on it now. But like, like, and, and I would say like, when, when we got past, I'm like, see, you're tearing down tripods now. And he's like, all right, dude. All right. <laughs> that is just, but you do got to, you talk to him like a kid a little bit because maybe, he likes it a little bit. What? You when, think he likes being talked to like a kid? A little bit. Really? Yeah, when you're like, come on, buddy. And he's like, oh, man. <laughs> In my head, I feel like he's, um, yeah, like you have to. Think about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's hard to explain with Steve. He's like, um. He's a little enigma. I don't know what it is. It, it's like uh, he is. I can undoubtedly say he's one of the the coolest, most unique people I've met in my entire life. Yeah, especially like of like working closely. I've yeah. never worked with anybody like Steve before. And you he's never a will. This will be the last time. <laughs> he's a unicorn. I'm shutting down the show what? today on Whiskey Ginger. This will be the final episode this week of Scissor Bros. It will no longer exist as we are taking over. And we're shutting it down permanently. Are we calling it good friends now? Oh, <laughs> you're going to call it no friends because what? it's going to be over, my friend. No friends? Mm-hmm. And it's going to be you in one room by yourself and Steve in another room by himself. And you'll just be do- and you'll be simultaneously broadcasting, but neither of you will know what the other one is talking about. Actually, a great show idea to see if you could communicate. What a nightmare for editing. But to see if you could communicate a show without seeing what each other is doing. Like you time it, you do an hour, he does an hour in a room and see if you can cut it together. Oh, wow. That would be hard. Well, we did one time uh, because we lost, the camera went out with us, uh, without us noticing. We had, we did a recreation where we had the audio still, but then what we did was we filmed Steve at his apartment and yeah. he, we had, I sent him the audio you and he did a bad, it. he did a bad dub while I was on the other side of the screen and he was at his apartment. That's pretty cool. It was fun. It was, did it look good? He was good. He was really good. I, I gave him a note on like, I'm like, just wait a second on this one, just a little bit. And then mm-hmm. he freaking nailed it. Like, How long did the camera go on for? It was at least five minutes. <laughs> it was a long, it was a long thing. I've had multiple of the cameras go out or the, or the zoom back in the day would fail. Yeah. And then someone would be like, oh, guess you don't want to put out our episode. And I'm like, no, I'm embarrassed because I, the fucking card failed. And I used to shoot it on one camera. Ooh, yeah. The zoom would fuck up. That happened all the time. I've only had to do one call ever where I lost everything. 
And that was, I least, felt yeah. the worst. It's happened to me three times, two or three times. And it was a bummer because you're like, well, they're not going to believe me. I and know. Like, what do you mean? What do you mean? What ha- What do you mean? The yeah. camera failed? And you're like, I, I, I definitely hit it. Do you know what I mean? But you're like, I don't. Uh. That's how I find out about tonight. <laughs> we leave. I look. Well, tonight like, did not happen. Nothing, none of this stuff. None, none nothing of this recorded. Stuff. Yeah. No. It's just for me because I wanted to rip you away from your family late at night. Oh, I was good. like, how could I get this guy away from his young child? Yeah, of course. And I feel like that's totally fine. I don't. Well, think we're getting any... food after this, right? Yes, we are. Huh? That didn't seem very like steadfast or very of assured. Course, of course, we're getting food, Jeremiah. We're there's plenty of options. Sure. Yeah. Of course, we will. Yeah, we're gonna grab some food. Yeah. <laughs> What would you like? Is there any Thai food places open? Or any, At midnight? Any Mexican food places around here? There is, yeah. There's a truck at the gas station. Ooh. You ever had that? No. You ever had gas station Mexican food? Only in different cities, not in LA. Ooh, the best. Come on, man. Well, you're in the valley now, Papa. This is... Okay, Papacita. The valley is where it happens. This, 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 this is the This is the late night... This is the late night food truck... Uh, Shade, not shady spots. Yeah, some of the spots are shady that okay. I know. But if you're cool, they're cool, man. Are you cool? Mm, it's love or not. No, don't. This is no. This is white power. No, I think. Oh my God! There's, we're never gonna get tacos. Yeah, it's love or not. Wait, what? It's love or not. It's love or not. Mm-hmm. Don't do this. It's love or not. Oh my God. Mm, bien. Nada. No. Nada. Hablas español? Sí o no? Sí. Un poquito o no? Sí. Mm, muy largo español, ¿no? What? Muy largo. Marlago? Muy largo. Are you a Trump guy? Muy largo. <laughs> That's <laughs> what it is, Santino. Okay. Muy largo. Mar Lago's I love I Mexicans. Muy largo. The Mexicans are very good people. They're very good, okay. Pretty good. Pretty solid, okay. Pretty good. It's no Alec Baldwin. I like bald one, yes. Give that guy some more work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are you on tour? Are you moving around on the road? Uh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Where are you going? I'm going to be at uh, Moon Tower Comedy Festival, and then uh, I'll be back. Are you uh, doing that by yourself? Yeah, we're doing uh, Stand Up on the Spot taping there, and um, and then I'm just doing we'll a bunch of stand-up Tower. shows. Me and, and Bob are like doing Moon Tower. I think you guys are the week before everybody else is there, though. Oh, cool. You are. You're doing no like idea. a you're doing like a Friday night in the theater before everybody gets there. Oh, cool! I don't know. They offered it to us, and I actually did not want to do it. I was like, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. Oh, the venue's dope where you're playing. No, I know, but I don't give a shit. I was like, I don't think I want to do it because I'm exhausted. More about? Did and, you want to see people? No, that I don't give a fuck about at all. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't give a fuck about comics can kiss my ass. They all suck. I love the hang, man. <laughs> <laughs> I did, you know what? Last time I went to Montreal, I, I had. It was such a mediocre time that I was like, man, this is not what it used to be. Yeah. No one was hanging out. It just wasn't what it used to be. But Moon Tower would be cool to see people, but I just, we are, we're, I'm moving around so much on the road. Moon Tower is a good hang. But I got to get in and got to get out anyway. I'm going to Dallas the next night. So it's like, gotcha. It's just too hard to hang anymore, you know? I mean, I, it, it, Montreal, if it does come back in full swing, would be nice to go back up to, Canada and go see people for a few days because I did used to I used to love seeing that running into people I never see anymore. Oh, you know? dude! I just saw Norman on on uh, the road. We were both uh, playing. Hey, he, he was Watkins, at the... I'm gay. Hey, Santino, good I'm to see gay, you. I'm gay, Jeremiah. I'm Queef. Kevin Hart. Queef. comedy, comedy. What are you gonna do? Uh, he's. Uh... I love black guys. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, he he does actually. <laughs> that's that's the weirdest part. He says that and you're like, I know. He was at the funny bone. I was at Go Bananas, and he uh, drove over with his host, and we just hung, uh, like on Saturday Those night. Those kind of moments I really love when you. It was legit. City. It was, it was cool because I hadn't got to do that. I hadn't seen him a for a long time, but I hadn't gotten to hang with another comic friend on the road in a long time, I know. just because of COVID and everything. And uh, it was awesome. It was just great to. Hang and BS, you know? No, it is nice to see. It's nice to run into, to, to cross over on people. Like we did, I played a small theater. Emmy Blotnick played Madison Comedy on State. And um, why am I drawing such a huge fucking blank? Brian Regan played the theater. And we all kind of met up there. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it was so wild. 
Yeah. She's a killer, by the way. Emmy, Emmy Blotnick. Do you know her? Yeah. She was in my JFL year, I believe. Let me tell you something, dude. She, yeah. she, killer um, writer. She's a great comic, man. Yeah. I watched her set and I was fucking. She's really solid. It was really good. It was just like nice to see someone that you don't really see that much. You know what I mean? Yeah. She was really shy about it, too. She's like, oh, thanks. I was like, no, you fucking. Oh, yeah. Smashed. She's murder. She smashed. Yeah. Uh, but go see Jeremiah. If you are out on the road and you are uh, wandering around looking for something to do and you want to get rid of your family, yeah. kill them and go to his show. New York City in May. I'll be there uh, May 16th. What are you playing? The, uh, Tuesday, May 17th, we're going to do a stand up on the spot uh, taping at New York Comedy Club. New York Comedy Club, NY. And then, um, CC. We just actually dropped a stand up on the spot special that's out now for free on my YouTube. Go to Jeremiah's YouTube. Go watch Scissor Bros. Go enjoy all of these things. Scissor Bros album. April oh yeah, the super album just, just is coming out. Yeah. Thanks for coming on the show, Jeremiah. Thanks so much for having me. Go see this guy. He's a very funny guy. I'm on tour. Go to andrewsantino.com for those tickets. Go to jeremiahwatkins.com for his tickets and for all things Jeremiah. Uh, we end the show the same way. Thank you for coming. This was very nice. We end the show the same way. One word or one phrase. You look into that camera, your camera, and you say one word or one phrase to end the episode. It'll be cemented in history. So when you're ready, go ahead. Pedantic. In here, we pour whisk, 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 whisk. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers.